What is good, everyone? This is your host, Deanna Radulescu with Label Free Podcast. Live your best life. You must live label free. Super pumped. So this is Label Free Podcast. My next guest is living just label free, doing incredible things. He's the president of his 501c3, a national talk show host, a serial entrepreneur, a first responder, and an engineer. Please welcome John C. Morley to the show. John, thank you for joining thank us today. Thank you so much. It is, it is a privilege and a pleasure to be on your show today. Oh, thank you so much. That was very sweet. You do a lot. And I've actually really enjoyed our conversation before we started recording. So I guess, can you tell the audience a little bit about your background? Background. So just to give you like a quick bird's eye view, because I could spend a whole week on it. <laughs> when I was in college, I um, knew that I wanted to start my own business. Yeah. And back in high school, there was something called basic. You probably remember beginners all purpose of ball construction code well i learned basic before i got to high school i taught myself oh wow when i got to high school this one um teacher mrs burns i know she's still alive today wonderful lady she said to me john she says uh, you're not taking basic i said why not she says i've seen what you do I said, why can't i take it i said i'll do very well she said well that's exactly why you're not taking it um i've talked to the principal talk to the principal, talk to the principal. And I'm actually taking another class. And I asked him if it would be okay if I took you out of basic and put you in my class and I would teach you during silent study. And I'm like, what's your class? Well, I'm learning Pascal. Pascu? Yeah. And so I started taking that class, which was harder. It was basically when you did basic, basic was not a compiled language. So it was high level English, pretty much. Okay. When you did Pascal, you had to take the code, you had to compile compile it into what they call uh, object code. Then you had to compile it again into a linkable executable code that you could actually run as a program. And so um, my uh, my teacher, she was she was she was a great, very smart lady. She taught chemistry and she taught physics. Okay. And um, she didn't like people that wanted to take shortcuts. Now, I never wanted to take a shortcut, but she says, are you going to go into computers and engineering? I said, oh, no, Mrs. Burns. I said, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I do that as a hobby. She said, what do you mean? I said, I don't know if I want to do this. I'm going to talk to your parents. She's like, I think you really should go into that field. I'm like, well, I like it, but that's a hobby for me. She's like, exactly. She's like, I'll talk to them. And she talked to them and I talked to her and I'm in this class and I'm doing well in this class. And. I now have this bullet in my head that I'm going to go into engineering and going to do computers. Even though I love it so much, I'm now going to make it, I guess, part of a career. I get to my college and around my, well, before I got to college, I actually wrote and built my, uh, one of our family businesses. My mom had a dry cleaning plant. My dad um, designed all the uh, land surveys for real estate for commercial gas stations at the time. Oh, wow. That was his business. And so uh, my mom had a dry clean plant, but she wasn't technically savvy. So I made something really keep it simple, stupid. It was a touch screen. We were the first dry cleaning plant to have a touch screen computer system. Wow. I even wrote an interface to white conveyor to talk to the rack system so that when you put a number in, it would pull the clothes out so that you were paid first. Well, long story short, I used to come home every weekend. And one week, my dad called me. I think it was in my sophomore year. And he says, John, he says, oh, we're having an issue with the server. I said, why are you having an issue with the server? He said, it doesn't come on. I said, what do you mean it doesn't come on? Mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't come up. I said, is the power like plugged in? You turn it on. I said, yeah, I did that. Can you turn on the monitor? What's that thing? That's the thing on the bottom. Just turn the switch on. Does it have a light on it? Does the server have a light on it? Oh, it does. I said, okay. What's on the screen? Um, invalid uh, disk. Okay. And so at that time, we knew their hard drive crashed. And I had to fix it for them. Another time they called me, and the computer gave a poster, a power on self tester. I said, Oh, that's real simple. Just go to, at that time, it was uh, CompuSA, who's now in a business. Yeah. And I yeah. said, Just go there. It'll be like, they'll charge you $25 for the battery, and they'll probably charge you 100 bucks to change the battery. So 125 bucks. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he goes over there like Monday or Tuesday. Long story short, he comes back. They give him a whole runaround. They now tell him on Wednesday what it's going to cost to fix the computer because he paid $75 for an estimate, which was crazy. Yeah. 
And they said, it's going to be 1800. What? He said, 1800. Hold on a minute. He says, I- I'm going to think about that. Calls me up. And he said, just hang on, time out. I'll be home on Friday yeah. and I'll deal with it. So I go in the store and I pretend that I know nothing about computers. Right. And the guys over there hardly speaking English, with all due respect to them, they just don't know. But you can't yeah. use the language as a barrier to tell me you don't understand. A lot of people do that. They use the right. language as their safe mark, but they can yeah. speak English just like you and I can. Yes, I already know this. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, I told him I didn't know computers. I was going to school. Uh, I told him for business management. That's what I told him. Right. And I said, but you know, a friend of mine who does know computers said, you know, here's this little coin he gave me. I don't know. It's some kind of a, like a coin, like a cell or a battery. I don't even know. He said, could you pop it? He says, oh, I don't know if we could do that. He said, just, just try it for giggles. I mean, can we do that? Oh, we have to go open the case again. So we have a screwdriver. I mean, I have one of my cars. We can open it. So we opened the case. He said, I don't know where we put it. He said, well, if I had to look, I think it's got to go somewhere where the circle could fit, right? Yeah. And the only place that circle's big enough, oh, right there. Uh-huh. How do we get that out? I said, I don't know, but maybe we could take a screwdriver or a paper clip. I guess we yeah. could kind of push it out. It's like, maybe I never, you never did that before. I said, me neither. It's the first time. So we're taking a thing. I was like, oh, it came out. I said, okay, then I think you got to put the other one back in. He said, how do we put it? I said, I think there's a mark on the battery and there's a mark there and we got to match them. I think, I, I don't know if we're, yeah. you and I are learning together. Yeah. We put it in there. He goes, um, Okay. I said, why don't we put the cover back on and let's plug it in? He said, it's not going to work. I said, I know it's not going to work, but at least we're going to humor me and humor my friend. Yeah. Turns it on, comes back up. And uh, he goes, hold on a minute. I got to get my manager. The manager comes over. He goes, that'll be 1800 I said, whoa, 1800 I said, I gave you the battery. Oh, I'm sorry. It'd be a 1775 plus tax. So I said, whoa, wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> I said, he actually just changed the battery. No, 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 it wasn't the battery, you see. He, we changed the whole motherboard. No, you didn't. I said, okay, now it's time for me to be truthful with you. I'm not a savant when it comes to technology. Yeah. I'm actually studying to become an engineer. And I actually built that machine. And all it was was a battery. He said, no, we changed the motherboard. You see, can you do me a favor? Could you read me the last four digits of a serial number? So he reads it. I'm like, 37J was the last one. Okay. Yeah. Is that the serial number? Yeah. How'd you do that? I said, well, you guys lied to me. You didn't change the motherboard. You actually have the same motherboard that was in there because I took a picture of the serial number when I built it a few years ago. Yeah. Hold on a minute. I got to get you somebody. Hold on a minute. Yes. Somebody else comes in. I said, it's real simple, guys. You're going to give my father back the $75 that you ripped him off. Or I'm going to call Fox 5 news on your side, NBC, ABC, Better Business Bureau, Consumer Affairs. Yeah. Do I make myself clear? Hold on a minute. I said, if you guys keep taking actions the way you are, you'll be out of business in less than a year. They were out of business in six months. Yeah. That's crazy. So at that point, you know, I knew that I had a gift. Yeah. And so I said, I'm only a sophomore, but in my junior year, I decided, hmm, let me launch a small computer company because you're allowed to make a certain amount of money and not really have it as a business legally. So right. you're allowed to make, I forget what the number was. I didn't make anywhere near that. And so um, I put an ad in the school paper and uh, it was $10 for me to come out there or $5 by phone. And you're probably saying, well, gee, that's great. John, five hours, he'd make 50 bucks. Yeah. I said $10 to come out and $10 cover the entire visit wow Whether i was there for a minute obviously i can't work like that <laughs> well right yeah this day and age i mean that's like a, that's like a take a gas not take a gas it's a gallon of gas now <laughs> exactly and, and with all the thing going on i've been filling up i've been cheating i never put in my car which 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 i have i have i have a luxury car and and, and i never put in you know the low gas because they always tell me it's going to blow up yeah well i decided to gamble with it. this is all got a tangent here and I decided I could mix the middle and the high did half and half. Then I did the low and the high. Now I'm putting it 80% low and only a couple gallons high. That's still okay. Car didn't blow up. Yeah. And every once a month, I give it a full treat, a nice chocolate. I give it a full tank of super. There you go. Once a month. So save me a lot of money. Anyway, getting back to my story, I decided 
that I was going to help people, whether it was teachers, students. So this one kid called me, he goes, uh, John, you computer, do computer service? I said, yes, I do. Oh, uh, I have a computer problem. I said, okay, well, I can help you. He said, well, when can you come over? I said, well, uh, let me check my schedule. You know, I'm actually free right now. Oh, okay, yeah, I'm free. I'm just finishing with a client. He was my first client. Okay. I went over to his dorm and uh, I said, you know, it's cash. We don't take a check yeah. and no credit cards. Oh, you don't take credit cards? No. Because you can go to the campus and get the t- You have $10 on you. Don't say, yeah, yeah, I have $10. I said, but you don't owe me anything till I fix it. So you don't have the money today. It's okay till I fix it. So I looked at it and uh, I said, what's the problem? He says, oh, I can't play this Dungeons and Dragons game. <laughs> I said, you drag me over here. Because you can't play a Dungeons and Dragons DOS game on your Windows computer. Yeah. That's hilarious. Because I'm really good at it and it keeps crashing. Okay. So I look at it. The computer used something called DOS, Disk Operating System. Yes. Not to get too boring with everyone, mm-hmm. but it used something called conventional memory. At that time, all you could have, still today in conventional memory, is 640K. You couldn't have more, you couldn't have less. That was it. Yeah. Then we had something called extended memory. But DOS programs couldn't take advantage of that, only Windows programs. And Windows then was only running at, at, uh, it wasn't running at at the full uh, technology. Uh, We were only running uh, at only 16-bit and not 32-bit. So we couldn't really access the extra memory. So it wouldn't matter if you put it in anyway. But the computer could only max out at like four gigs, uh, four megs of RAM. It was was not a lot. Okay. And so with that amount of RAM, four megs, not four gigs, four megs. You still couldn't do anything. Well, this DOS program had to operate in conventional memory. So we started to look at things like the autoexec.bat, config.sys file. And long story short, there are things in there like memory drivers. There's mouse drivers if you're not in Windows. There's sound drivers. There's TSRs, terminate state resident programs, like your antivirus program loaded in your config file or your autoexec.bat. They loaded drivers, uh, mapped which letters went to which drives and path things so you could find stuff. And so I spent some time, I looked at, I said, you know, this is going to take me some time. And um, at that point, it was a couple hours. And I said, it's getting late. I have to be at school tomorrow at 7 a.m. Yeah. I don't know what time's your class. I have to be at class eight. So why don't we schedule this on the weekend? So what do I always say? You don't owe me anything. I didn't fix anything. This was just an analysis. I said, I'll come back on Saturday, 10 o'clock. I came back and I was there. It was till about 12 o'clock. He says, you only owe you 10 bucks. I said, I didn't fix anything yet. I said, but if you want, you could make me a pizza or order me a pizza or something. Yeah. So I, so I am getting kind of hungry. So I worked with the computer and I said, I guarantee my work. About two hours later, he comes back to me. He says, how are we doing? I said, I said, we're just playing the game. I said, I, I don't know how to play this game. He said, you got it working? I said, yes. Oh my gosh, you're the best. So um, he gets in, he plays the game. He's like, wait, he's like, it's going to crash. I said, I said, go ahead and play it. So I sat there and waited a half hour so we could make sure the game didn't crash. Right. He's like, oh my gosh, I never got this far. It crashes when I get to the sixth level. Wow, I guess you're going to have to get better now to get past the sixth level. It looks like you just <laughs> died. <laughs> and uh, what do I owe you? I said, you owe me 10 bucks. And he says, wow. He says, 10, I said, 10 bucks. I said, thank you very much. He says, do I get a receipt? I said, well, I don't really have any receipts. I was like... <laughs> Yeah. And so uh, I knew that I had talent. I even had professors calling me, Dina, that said to me, John, and you know, they're always very nasty because yeah. that's how they are. Yeah. You know, I have a problem. Um, I need you to come by when there aren't any students around. Having an issue with my computer. Oh, um, sure. Uh, doctor, this one gentleman's name was Dr. Gray, came by and wasn't the nicest gentleman. Yeah. But that's just kind of how he was. And so, uh, but when I graduated, he changed his whole demeanor to like this really nice person. They are these nasty people while you're in class. He said it's part of his motivation. Okay. I didn't agree with it. Yeah. I anyway, uh, he made my life miserable. I was there in college for his class because he let people know that he's going to fail you, even if you knew technology. If you didn't come to class, I take my class 90% from the, no, the, no, the lecture. So if you miss the lecture, you're probably going to fail, even if you're intelligent. Yeah. Okay. And so I helped him with some things. The next, uh, I think it was the next week or two as a junior, they rolled out something called their own PBX, their own private branch exchange. Well, I decided, huh, this is pretty interesting. We don't have to deal with the telephone company anymore. We have our own phone system. 
this would be a great opportunity for me to create an internship. Sure. And I could evaluate these services and I wouldn't have to pay for them. Voicemail, phone service. At that time, a digital modem was in an, so I even had another phone that was digital and 9,600 baud was like the fastest we could go. Oh, wow. Uh, then we went up to 57.6, all digital. So I had some pretty interesting services. And then I actually wrote the software that would turn students off if they didn't pay and turn them up if they did pay. Oh my goodness. Look at and you. manage their billing system. Holy cow. It was written on a Linux system. I wrote it in basic. <laughs> and uh, I never turned students off on Fridays, only would turn them up on the weekends. I even wrote a system that would test students to make sure they knew the difference between Jack and Jack in the box when they used their phone. But what happened is students would complain because they had a 500 parents who complained they have a six, $700 phone bill. Because yeah. at that time you were paying for phone service. They'd right. be talking with their boyfriend, girlfriend, sitting in other and they didn't know the difference between hanging up and switching over. Oh. Well, they just switched over and the call is still on hold and we're still being billed and charged for that call. Sure. And so I developed a system that would test students out to decide whether they were going to get flash on their phones. I removed it from all students until they took the test. They thought what I was doing was a joke, but when I quickly controlled the phone systems, I got a little more respect. Yeah, I bet. Because I made the decision of whether they got turned on or off. I made the decision of lots of things. Well, I was a good guy then as well. And I always like to help people. Well, they sure. had student assistants, you know, the, I think they called them the CAs, computer assistants in the labs. And they usually didn't speak English and they never really wanted to help. They just were always in their book. They knew yeah. some stuff, but they always like, they said they didn't understand. No, no, you have to do this or call this number. They were really just there as babysitters to make sure people didn't do anything wrong or reset people's passwords. But that's it. They were no help. So I remember one time being home and I got a call. I think it was 10 o'clock at night. I said, you John? I said, yes, I'm John. Oh, okay. Miguel told me to call you. Miguel who? Oh, Miguel, the computer assistant here from UH Lab. Okay. How can I help you? Yeah. Oh, he said, you're really good with computers. Listen, um, I got locked out. They reset my Vax account. How do I get my fingers set up on the, on the terminal? So I'm walking him through this step. So then I got another call. Then another call. And not on the same day, but I started getting a couple of calls. I said, this is getting crazy. I'm getting five, 10 calls a week. I don't even know these people. I'm not even charging for this. So I decided to create what they entitled to today's uh, tribute, Morley's Smoke and Mirrors. <laughs> and what that was, was a way of me basically keeping out people that I didn't want to talk to that were trying to abuse me. Sure. So what I did is I, uh, one weekend, <laughs> I basically, they gave me full access to everything. And I set up a uh, voicemail, another voicemail box. But when you called in, I actually changed my phone number when you called in that would point to a voicemail box, like a call attendant. Sure. Hi, this is John. Um, please hold a moment while the system sees if I'm available. And if I am, you'll be connected automatically. However, what you didn't know was that that actually was a test. It wasn't checking if I was available at first. It was waiting for you to put a four-digit code that I signed to my friends. Ah, I got you. You didn't know that code. Sure. Sorry, I'm not available right now. Just leave me your name and number. Get back to you. Have a great day. They're like, you're never available. I'm like, I'm just busy. They're like, you're never available. We call it 12 o'clock at night. We call, why are you calling 12 o'clock at night? We were trying to reach you. So that that really stopped people from, sure. they weren't leaving me messages. Would you call me back? Because, I mean, we were going to call back. The lab, they weren't going to be there later. Yeah, right. Then it became funny because uh, I called a professor, one of these uh, not so nice professors, and they called the university's telecom department and said, I'm trying to reach uh, this, this number, John Morley. He says, I have this number for buzz. He's, says, oh, he goes, he's like, but the, the system says it's not in service. What do you mean it's not in service? Oh, he's a headache. He's like, I don't even want to go there. He's like, we don't even know what he does. Just his number, that's not his phone number. Well, that's the number he, it left when yeah. the voicemail yeah, his number changes every day. He's got like 50 phone numbers and they rotate. Well, what's oh, his wow. phone number? Well, the main phone number he probably gave you. Yeah, I have that number, but this is the number he called from. Yeah, just call the number that he gave you, not the number that it says he's calling from. Yeah. He's like, I don't even want to go into it. This would take, he's like, it's going to boggle my brain to explain this to you. Sure. And so Very when smart. I got back, I decided uh, that I, I was missing calls. So I wanted to get some calls from people. So when I was free and I want to take calls, I would hit a code that would allow me to have access to the system to 
to forward my number, which was pretty special. I could forward anybody's phone without being at it. That was pretty dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> and so we well. let people forward their own phones, but I shouldn't be able to forward your phone if I'm not in front of it. And so you're still in college at this point, right? So yeah, I was still in college. You? How old are still you? In college. Oh boy. Early twenties. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Early twenties. Wow. And so um, I set up this thing where I would hit this code. Because a lot of times I would, um, so it would open the phones. But what I also did was I had a code that would actually set it so it would tell the system where I was. Sure. So if I was, let's say, at the at the at the Newman Club or I was at Student Association, the system would just forward right to my desk automatically, all with these codes. And so um, the director of telecommunication, I think, is still there today. Who oh, used wow. to work for Rome? He. Uh, left Rome and they kind of gave him like a permanent position there. Wasn't the most friendly guy, but he knew I knew my stuff. He gave me access. He said, John, we'll give you access to anything. He said, but if I have any problems or any issues with you, like taking faculty or uh, anybody's phone that's on the other side of campus and there's any problems with them, I'm going to revoke your access. I said, no problem. So I had access to do anything I needed to do, reset somebody's voicemail. I had total access to the system. And so um, if I needed more space, I could just grant myself more space. If I needed this, if I needed that. I remember one time I was um, trying to get through to a friend of mine. And uh, I said, I'm trying to call this person for a long time. He says, well, your, your telecom, he says, you actually can, can check the line status. I said, what do you mean? He says, well, he says, if the line's busy for too long, you, you technically could check the line to see if it's okay. Yeah. Wouldn't that be eavesdropping? He says, yes. He says, and there's a way you can do it. Um, oh, right. And all you need to do is tell them uh, that you can hear us, but we can hear them. Right. That kind of covers them. Hi, this is telecommunications department. Uh, we're just checking out the line. We've been getting several phone calls that just want to make sure you're okay. We can hear you. But you can hear us. Uh, please do finish up your phone call because we've been getting several calls of people that are trying to reach you. If you need to reach us at the telecommunications department, just call us at extension. And people thought nice. that was well. You broke into my phone call. I don't know who you were talking. I have no idea. Oh, I couldn't hear you. We could, right. but I yeah. told them we could. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Dad. Hey, Very did you up. know that uh, April is uh, National Testicular Cancer Awareness Month? You know, I did. I did hear that, but. I've been around for a long time and, and I wouldn't know how to check myself. You can go to uh, manscaped.com, uh, TCS, and they have some simple checks that you can actually do and uh, it'll show you how to do it. Well, that's great, Mike, because we're with Label Free Podcast and we partner with Manscaped to make people aware of testicular cancer and how they can check themselves. We here at Label Free Podcast partnered up with Manscaped and we have a promotion going. Uh, where you input label free 20 and you get 20% off the product and shipping. And some of the products that I, I know that we have here, the new premium products they, they just came out with. Uh, I know that Manscaped's taking care of our below the waist issue and I know that you endorse the product because you, you've you used it. I have. I have that. I've you know, got to save my balls. That's, that's the best way to go. <laughs> <laughs> it was time to graduate. Yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> He said, Eric said, put everything back the way you found it. We don't care what you did. Just put it back the way you found it. Because it'll take us months to figure out what, figure you, out did. what you did. Right. And we don't want to be trailing you down for years to figure out how to fix somebody's phone. Yes. <laughs> so uh, I was about to graduate, which I did. And there was a gentleman that came to me. And he offered me a job. Very nice job. I had some morals. He came to me and I knew the company that he worked for. And I said, sir, I said, I'll be more than happy to work for you, providing that it doesn't deal in any of these three areas. Basically, I'm not going to write software or code that, or be part of any hardware apparatus, equipment, et cetera, or mm -hmm. projects that have anything to do with a device or a system that's responsible for taking the life of another human being. Oh, wow. Hmm. Was, well, uh, I guess you're probably not a fit for us. I said, I guess not. I would be developing military role. I said, I'm not doing that. Yeah, that would be. That so would be I fun. so I moved away from that. My parents thought I was crazy because that was a huge number back then. I said, money will come to me. I said, I'm not worried sure. about it. 
There was special. And uh, I remember that after that, it was time to graduate. My dad came to me. And my mom always said, you know, your mom takes care of you through basically through um, uh, high school. And my, and my um, mother said, it's my dad's responsibility to take me from college out. That's his job. Now. Sure. That's his responsibility. So he says, so I'm going to give you a choice. He says, I'm going to give you one week off and I'm going to give you some money and you can go find a job. Or I'm going to give you a little more money and you could take two or three weeks off. And then you can come back and start your own company. So what did you end up doing? We, we're we're, getting, second, we're, we're, we're second, past our the, time, so we got to start. I'm sorry. The, sec, the, sec, the second, the second, the second, the second. You started your own company. I started my own company. Uh, I uh, which at the time was JCM and Son, which was my dad's company. So I just kind of yeah. changed the status to make it tax. And then after that, I um, realized that I needed help to market the company again. They said, John, you're never going to market. You're never going to advertise it. At I believed everybody. Sure. Fast forward, fast forward, fast forward. I was involved with this uh, mind gentleman who did hypnosis. I got blown away by him. I called him on the carpet because I told him, if you do anything, you're not going to get this check or another, and I'll make sure your tours get canceled. So we had a very strict professional relationship, and he was respectful to me. And I got out of there, read one of his books, his audio tapes, and I hired this company because of a friend of mine whose uncle works there, still mm -hmm. in business today, unfortunately, largest marketing advertising company. And here's the magic. The one company's in business 34 years this year. Okay? okay. And our slogan is Wall Street trusts us with their IT technology needs, shouldn't you? So we actually can print that because we do that. Right. About 11 years ago, you know, I realized this isn't going anywhere. Sure. I'm spending money, my father's money. I'm not getting anywhere. What am I going to do? I said, I got to fire this company. Yeah. Everybody says, you're not going to market. You're not going to advertise. I said, I get it, mm -hmm. but I got to figure this out. I mean, yeah. I've learned you could do things with the mind. And I went to Xerox who were already, um, who were a client of already. I said, how do I become a mom and pop print shop? And they said, John, just 150. I said, 150 dollars. I'll give it to you right now. No, 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 no. 150,000. So, so let me go to my bank. Went to my bank. My bank said yes. I came back to them. Long story short, got training, got the machine. About a week later, I walked into their office. Good morning. Listen, I wanted to say thank you. We had a great run and we're done. Yeah. Can you hang on? I didn't have my coffee yet. I, I, I'm not really awake. Then he gets the sales manager. So I'll blow through all that. Bottom line is I fired them. Good. They tried to give me discounts and all kinds of stuff. Then they came back to me when I was successful after failing for two years and said, we'd like to uh, take some of your clients, help you, because, you know, we're used to dealing with the corporate world and this. I said, why would I ever do that? Yeah. I said, and destroy that kind of reputation. I got a concept for you. Why don't we take some of your clients that you're going to lose or that, you know, are probably going to sue you or have already gone. You just haven't accepted it yet. And um, we'll help you with those. You keep your name. We'll study their plan, do an ROI, give them a market return, get them a profit. How's that for a plan? Yeah. Well, John, wow. that's a great idea, but that's above my pay grade. Right. So how can you possibly be asking me to go out to lunch Right. when exactly. you don't have the jurisdiction to have the right kind of conversations that management would be having with me? And they just kind of went away. So then it blossomed. Uh, the, the tech show I had for many years uh, started quite a few years ago on Blog Talk. And then I actually made my first big break. I uh, grew my audience. Uh, actually, I got on national radio. I was very happy if I went on national radio. And I got my first advertiser. But wait, before you hear about this, I didn't get one penny of this. Brought my first advertiser into the station at three and a half million. Wow. I went there. I'll go through the whole thing. I didn't get a penny of it. So right. I'll save you all the, all, the, all the intermediaries. Long story short, they said, John, you're not getting any money. The owner told me. I said, what do you mean? Well, it's a, it's a weird conundrum. I said, well, what do you mean? Yeah, the, the, just the way the cookie crumbled this time. What cookie? I don't want any cookies. No, it, it's a figure. So I, I know. Why am I not getting money? Well, you see, he did call in, and we got the three and a half million, by the way, yesterday. Thank you so much. I said, You're welcome. Okay. But, uh, you're not getting any money because he actually didn't buy a spot on your show. What did he buy? He bought your show out. So, how so you're you saying he bought then? my Thursday night show out for three and a half million. I didn't know my show was worth that. Neither did we. But we got three and a half million for your show. 
So how do you not get a piece of that then? They said that's just how it works. Wow. So okay. I went away and I said bye bye to media, yeah. to the industry, to all this stuff. And I said, this is not fair. We didn't really have any contracts. It was all kind of right. handshake. Now we do everything legally with contracts. Sure. So we do that again. Yeah. And so um, after all that happened, I got out of this for a while. A few years ago, I said, I'm done with the tech show. I'm done with video producing. I'm done with all. I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. I did voiceovers. I was done with all this media stuff. And then a person going to say, John, there's a guy who wants to meet you. I said, okay. He wants to talk to you about Jay Moore Tech Talk. I said, oh, that show sailed. We don't do that anymore. What do you mean it sailed? We don't do it. He just wanted to talk to you about it. Well, yeah, I can help him if he wants to start. Maybe he wants to start his own show. I said, I could talk to him, sure. So again, I says, John, how are you? Nice to meet you. It's a pleasure to meet you. Listen, I know the show's not around anymore. I was wondering if I, if you'd, if you'd humor me for a moment. Said, yeah, sure, we want. Would you mind if we just did one more show? I said, I don't do the shows anymore. If I could be your co-host, I would just, I always wanted to be a co-host. All right, pick a date. We'll do one show. Sure. Fridays, 5.30 p.m. We picked the date. We did it. Show was okay. And then after that, he says, you know what? I had so much fun. Could we do one more? I said, all right, I'll do one more because I understand that you want to do it one more time, but then we're done. We're, we're, yeah. we're, it's finished. We're not doing this anymore. You're not going to ask me on the show. Like there's no more shows. Deal. We got on the second show and I'm like, and ladies and gentlemen, I need to bring some news to you. Said, oh, but, but, but wait, John. What do you mean wait? We had a deal. We did. However, you have six guests lined up for the next shows and two of them are celebrities. Oh, snap. Okay, well, we were going to announce that this was our last show, but I guess we're going to keep continuing, and we'll <laughs> be right back here next Friday night at 5.30 p.m. Eastern. And if you're looking to learn about technology, how it works, how it doesn't work, catch us. That grew, that grew, that grew, that grew. This year, I said, we're, we're breaking close to almost 3,000. We're trying to hit 10,000. We went to iHeart, went to a lot of different things. Yeah. So that worked out great. And then last year, um, around December, I said, you know, I need to do more than just these little, because I would always do motivation for a while. Yeah. And I wanted to do more than just these daily. I said, I wanted to do something that meant something. So I created a theme. Mm -hmm. And so like this week's theme is what is motivation? Yesterday, I talked about the fact that, you know, is it that thing you get in the store? Can you download motivation? Is it an ice cream cone? Is it a chocolate? Yeah. What's motivation? Like, what is it? Where do you get it? How do you touch it? Yeah. How do you understand it? So I did that. And then um, I think it was in... December, I said, you know what? Or, or November, I said, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something unique. My first theme. My first theme was 25 gifts of inspiration to change your life and oh, everyone else that. in it. What's that? I love that. So and so that's the theme of my new book that's coming out in a few months. Oh, nice. All right. And so there is a gift that I gave myself, and not to give away the whole book, but one of the items was a trash can. I bought these all at the dollar store. Mm -hmm. And I said, what did my higher self wrap me today? So I don't wrap like a trash can. It's my higher self trying to tell me that I'm trash, and I don't think that's what it is. Oh, I get it. My higher self wants me to get rid of some things in my life, maybe some people. Sure. Exactly. Then I got a stick, like a roll-on stick. Why would my higher self be giving me a lint roller? Am I full of lint? No, I get it. I guess he wants me to stick to things until they're completed. There you go. So I that's kind of where I went, theme. and that whole theme kind of went on. I also went to building last year. It'll be a one year anniversary for my other channels, which are weekly productions. Things like John C. Morley, Serial Entrepreneur. I do um, a Super Motivational Friday, which is pretty amazing. I do a uh, Invision Networking, had a network with Science Fridays, had a network with John, the science guy. Uh, we do things like build rockets and we talk about the rockets of desire. So we always have a science experiment. I'm like, so you're wondering why I did this or I did Invisible Ink, which is my favorite one. And I do the invisible ink experiment. So, so why is John making invisible ink? I'll tell you why. Sooner or later, I'm going to tell a lie. And you're going to show up to a party. And Mr. or Mrs. Grape Juice are going to show up too. And they'll expose you for the true liar that you really are. Wow, that's pretty deep. So where can people find you, John? Where, what's the best route for people to... So the easiest you? route for people, because I have so many places, you can go to my link tree and learn a lot about me. That's L-I-N-K tr.ee forward slash j-o-h-n-c-m-o-r-l-e-y serial entrepreneur s-e-r-i-a-l-e-n-t-r-e-p-r-e-n-e-u-r and you'll be able to discover all the great things that i do 
lots of the other content that I produce. And like I said, the main reason I'm here is to become a better version of myself and help everyone else become better versions of themselves. But the choice is not up to me. It's up to all of you watching. You have to take the first step. If you do, you'll be successful. Do you ever wake up in the morning and find you stub your toe? It's not if you stub your toe, but how you're going to spiral down or make a decision to say, I stub my toe. It's yeah. a bump in the road. Yes, it and is. Let's move on because yep. the rest of your day is going to be a great one. Awesome. And I'll make sure I put that, that link in the show notes, you guys, so don't hesitate to click on it and figure, see all the amazing things that John does. John, it's been awesome having you on the show today. Any last words of wisdom or advice you'd like to leave, you leave the audience before we say goodbye? Yeah, so, so I think the biggest thing I want to end with is the A game. So about a year or two ago, I had uh, maybe more than that. I had a gentleman that was in a uh, political office, a pretty high office, and kind of were a little bumping heads because it was like a political thing. And I always tell people I do things for the reasons to help others not to get on stage or not to get in the limelight. And he called me in his office one time and he says, John, when are you going to give up? Like, when are you going to give up with this charity nonsense? Like, when are you just going to realize, you know, we don't need that in our town? So I said to him, um, oh, by the way, you know that project that you came up with uh, six months ago? I said, yeah, we're launching it and you're not, and nor is your group. So now I got hit below the belt twice. So I sit back in my chair and I close my eyes. He goes, what are you doing? And I said, you know, I don't want to lie to you. I want to give you the exact month, day, hour, minute, second that John's going to officially give up on this charity nonsense. Give me a minute. Mm -hmm. I come back. I said, you know what I'm going to give up, sir? I'm going to give up when a little baby boy or a little baby girl tells their parents they don't want to walk anymore. He looks at me with all kinds of funny expressions. When the blank is that? You're a parent, right? You have two kids. They all walked, right? When did either of them ever say to you they don't want to learn to walk anymore? I'm just doing this for a few minutes. Never. You know, I always knew that you were a very bright, intelligent, and distinguished man and would give me the correct answer when I asked that question. The answer when I will give up, sir, is never. There you he go. He says, John, you're arrogant. Now get out of my office. I said, you know, sir, I didn't need your help, but I was asking for it as an olive branch. And that leaves me with the last tip. And that is bring your A game. Because if you don't bring your A game, no one else will. If everyone likes you in life, that's a problem. Yep. People need to be a little bit concerned. Bring your A game. And you'll go far because if you don't, someone will replace you and they'll become the new Indian. Woo, boom. Well, on that note, thank you, John, <laughs> for being a guest. You guys, this is your host, Deanna Radulescu with Label Free Podcast. Live your best life. You must live Label Free. Please don't forget to comment, rate, review, share, all those good things. And I'll be back soon with more dynamic guests.